In America, we tend to listen with rapt attention to the wisdom of people who have succeeded in the private sector. If they've made billions, we think surely they must have profound insights into the world. And when the person speaking is obviously brilliant, this adds to our veneration. So when somebody as staggeringly rich and staggeringly intelligent as Elon Musk talks, people listen. Hi. Alas, what Hi, came out of Musk's mouth this week was a series of self-serving and ill-informed comments about President Biden's spending plans. Musk advised that it would be better if the bill doesn't pass because our spending is so far in excess of revenue, it's insane. Seemingly selfless, he explained that he didn't want any subsidies himself for his flagship company, Tesla, neither for charging stations nor for cars. I'm literally saying get rid of all subsidies. Some of this might be sour grapes. Tesla actually outgrew the federal government's tax credit on electric vehicles a long time ago. The federal government provides a $7,500 tax credit for electric vehicles, but they expire once the manufacturer has sold 200,000 of them, a mark Tesla crossed in 2018. In addition, the Biden bill adds $4,500 more in credits per car if the manufacturer uses unionized labor, and Tesla does not. As for charging stations, one of Tesla's key advantages is that it already owns and operates thousands of them. Federal subsidies in the infrastructure bill that recently passed would simply erode that advantage by building new ones for all electric cars. It is bizarre and ironic that Elon Musk should be the tech billionaire who so opposes government spending. Three of Musk's endeavors, Tesla, SpaceX, and SolarCity, would probably not even exist if not for federal support. Tesla owners, like me, by the way, have for many years received generous tax credits and incentives from the federal and many state governments. And in 2010, after a global recession, when Tesla was a fraction of the size it is now, the company got a $465 million loan from the Department of Energy, which gave it a desperately needed shot in the arm. The state of Nevada gave Tesla a $1.25 billion tax incentive package to build its battery factory there. Solar City has benefited from all kinds of subsidies and tax credits that incentivize the production and installation of solar panels. And lift off. And SpaceX's largest customers, of course, are federal government agencies, from NASA to the Department of Defense. Musk defends himself by saying he's in favor of getting rid of all subsidies because he wants those for oil and gas eliminated as well. Oil and gas subsidies should be pared back, but they really aren't as many as people seem to think. A 2018 study by the Energy Information Administration found that in fiscal year 2016, the renewable energy industry received almost half of all federal energy subsidies while generating just only one-eighth of the energy produced in the United States. This is as it should be. Green energy is the future, after all. But let's be clear. If all subsidies were eliminated, it is green energy that would suffer the most. Musk's comments on the budget were also disappointing. They seem to parrot conventional wisdom about budget deficits that has not been vindicated by evidence. Over the past 30 years, governments like America and Japan have been able to run massive deficits, and yet interest rates have overall trended way down. Even today, rates remain low despite the surge in inflation. Does the market understand something that we don't? Infrastructure spending is essential, and there is really no serious argument against it when the cost of borrowing for the federal government is essentially zero. Musk admitted that America needs better airports and roads and better mechanisms to ease traffic in cities, but he seems unwilling to allow for the investments that would actually tackle these problems. The federal government's investment in green energy is very similar to what it did in the 1950s with computer chips, paying much more for a new technology so that the price could later come down for everyone. It resembles the investments government made in the 1960s to develop ARPANET, the first rough version of the Internet, and later the global positioning system. These policies, incidentally, created the digital infrastructure which made possible companies like PayPal, the original source of Elon Musk's billions.